Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at an example that illustrates the concept of comprehensive income. What is comprehensive income? Well, comprehensive income is any item that bypass the income statement, but it affects your equity. So basically, what it, what affects your equity? Well, what affects your equity are revenues, expenses, gains, losses, investment by owners, withdrawals, dividend. Those are the transaction that affect your equity. So there are certain transaction that affect your equity, but they don't affect your income statement. What are those some potential comprehensive income items? Well, cash flow hedges, unrealized gain or losses and losses on available for sale securities, foreign currency translation adjustments. So what happened is this, these transactions, they don't affect your income statement, but they affect your equity. They by bypass your equity. They, I'm sorry, they bypass your income statement, but they affect your equity. So therefore, we report them as part of comprehensive income. Now, comprehensive income can be reported separately. In other words, it could have its own comprehensive income statement, or it can be part of the income statement. In this session, I will show you how comprehensive income is reported as part of the income statement, although in the real world, it can be shown as a separate statement comprehensive income could be a separate statement then comprehensive income will go to other comprehensive income on the balance sheet and will end up on the balance sheet but it has its own income statement now this topic is extremely important comprehensive income whether you are an accounting student or a cpa candidate and this illustration basically i'm showing you an illustration this could be a quasi cpa simulation you could see it on it on on a, in a in a form of a multiple choice questions so whether you are an accounting student or a cpa candidate i strongly suggest you take a look at my website farhatlectures.com i don't replace your cpa review course that's not my intent nor i replace your accounting course my motto is saving accounting students and cpa candidate one at a time how by providing resources for their accounting courses managerial accounting intermediate governmental cost audit and providing new resources for your cpa preparation my cpa resources are aligned with your becker roger glean and wiley so it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your cpa review course it's also beneficial to you because i give you access to 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions in addition to thousands of practice multiple choice questions. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording, it helps, it helps me tremendously. Connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. Let's take a look at this example to illustrate the concept of comprehensive income. So we have the trial balance of Adam Corporation a manufacturing company for the year ended December 31st, X1 or 2021. So we have revenues, cost of goods sold, selling and administrative interests, and gain on that securities. And the gain is unrealized gain on that securities. The gain on the debt securities is unrealized gain and classified as other comprehensive income. Now on the exam, they may not give you this piece of information. You need to know that unrealized gain, once they tell you it's unrealized gain, well, it's part of comprehensive income. The trial balance does not include the accrual for income taxes. So we have to accrue the taxes. Income taxes happens to be 25%. And we have 1 million shares of common stock outstanding. And so they're asking us to prepare a single continuous multiple step income statement of comprehensive income for 2021, including the appropriate earnings per share. So here they're asking us to complete the income statement which would include the comprehensive, well, basically the comprehensive income, which is part of the income statement. Well, let's start with the heading. First, it's the name of the company, statement of comprehensive income, year ended December 31st. Now, just want to let you know, if you are a subscriber to, to Farhat Lectures, you can remove those white blackout to, to see the whole thing if you would like to print it. How do we start an income statement? Well, hopefully we know this. We start by revenues. We have revenues of 2.3 million minus cost of goods sold 1.4 million that's going to give us gross profit of 900,000 from gross profit we are going to deduct operating expenses which will include selling and administrative they're combined together you might see them separately selling is any expenses that helps in, in the selling process 
for example, advertising expenses, shipping expenses, salaries paid for salespeople, sales commission. Administrative expenses are expenses that service the whole company, like um, HR, payroll, the CEO salaries, the CFO salaries, those are administrative expenses. Here they combine them, they happen to be 420,000. Well, what's gonna happen? Gross profit minus operating expenses, minus selling and administrative expenses, which is operating expenses, it's gonna give us operating income. And in the real world, operating income is a very important figure. So when you're evaluating a company's performance, your main concern is, is this company making a profit from operating the business? And it seems this company is making a profit. Then from operating income, you will deduct other expenses and income, which would, which whatever they are, other expenses and income, we could have, for example, here, interest expense of 40,000. So notice interest expense is separate than selling and separate than cost of goods sold because it has nothing to do with operating the business interest expense has to do with financing the business for example you could have two businesses one relying on debt which will have interest expense and the other business is relying on equity which they don't have interest expense they have to pay the shareholders dividend well bear in mind those two companies are comparable except don't include interest expenses as part of operating expenses so compare their operating income rather than some other figures which we'll see okay so interest expense is listed separately after we deduct interest expenses we come up to earning before income and taxes in the real world this is called ebit earnings before interest and taxes ebit before taxes now we're going to pay taxes we're going to pay taxes and we assume the tax rate is 25 percent that's going to give us a tax bill of 110,000. Now we come up with net income of 330,000. Now this is the this is the basically the income statement. Now, why do we call this statement statement of comprehensive income is because we are including the items that affect equity as part of this statement. So what is the item that affect equity that bypass income statement and that's the gain on that securities that are classified as available for sale which is part of comprehensive income now what we do is we have other comprehensive income and it's reported net of tax oci is reported net of tax now we have other comprehensive income of eighty thousand. well what's going to happen is we're going to have to multiply it one minus the tax rate and what's going to end up with is sixty thousand. so other comprehensive income is reported net of tax Net of tax means you report the number after you consider the tax consequences. So if we have an unrealized gain of 80,000, we have to pay taxes of 25%. So 80,000 times 0.25, that's gonna give us 20,000 of a tax bill. Therefore, our net of tax profit, 80 minus 20, will, which will give us 60,000. Therefore, gain on the debt securities, net of tax, is 60,000. Now we could come up with comprehensive income of 390,000. We have 1 million shares outstanding, 330,000 divided by 1 million shares. That's going to give us earnings per share of 33 pennies. Now the best way to learn more about comprehensive income and other topics is to go to farhatlectures.com. Once again, whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate, my material will help you understand your CPA content better. I don't replace your CPA review course. I don't replace your accounting course. I'm only going to be a supplemental material. Invest in yourself, invest in your career. My subscription is nominal. Try it, give me a chance for a month. You see it's helping you, you keep it. It's not helping you, you cancel. I have helped thousands of students. Your accounting career is worth it. The CPA exam is worth it. Good luck study hard, and of course, stay safe.